let's talk about making a pretty table in Excel. So what I've got set up right here is an okay table. I've entered all of this raw data and you can see this is data that you might expect from the uh, collision experiment that we did. And you can see it, it, it's, it's there but it's a little hard to read. The way that I've set it up is over here in this column that I'm highlighting that tells me the reading that was on the cart launcher and for each reading of the cart launcher, so for instance 1.5 centimeters, there were four different velocities that you should have measured and you should have done at least five trials. I've got six listed here and so this block of data right here shows the uh, velocities for the carts before and after the collisions for every trial. Uh, so the trick now is to get this looking like a nice table. Right now it's all jumbled up and it's hard to read the words. So the way you can fix that is by making the columns wider. That's one way you can fix it. So let's do that. Okay, now I can read that whole thing, initial setting on the launcher. And I can read that whole column. That's nice. Okay, but maybe that's a little too wide. Hmm. Maybe there's another solution to it. Oh well. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. For now, it's okay. Um, also, I'm going to change the font. Uh, I have a habit. I like to use 20th century. I think it's very legible. And so we'll use that font. Okay. Um, so what we have to do... Oh, and also I'll make it a little bit larger. Increase the font a little bit. Okay. Uh, so if you look at these numbers... They're all to different decimal places. Like this one right here, well, zero, that only has one significant digit. That has one significant digit down at the tenths place. Um, this guy, two, is only to the ones place. So some of a lot of them are to the hundredth place. It's inconsistent. Um, if you're measuring something, unless something strange happened in your lab, if you, were, you had consistent methods, all of your measurements should go down to the same decimal place. So these should all go down to the hundredth place. The problem is Excel doesn't like that. If you end a number in a zero, so I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If you end a number in zero, then it'll it'll ignore that zero. So I'm going to try to type in negative 0 0.20. Okay. Excel changes it to negative 0 0.2. It ignores the fact that we want it to have a, a hundredth digit in there. So what we got to do is you highlight all of that data. And we're going to go over to Format and Format the Cells and go to Number, the Category Number. And we're going to tell Excel that we want it to go down to two decimal places. So it's already set down to two decimal places. I'm going to click OK. Voila, there you go. All the numbers go down to the hundredth place. OK, and that's a very important thing to do. If you don't do that, if you have inconsistent significant digits or inconsistent decimal places in your significant digits, uh, that's, that's a no-no. That's a no-no for me, and that's a no-no for IB. So make sure you fix that. It should all go down to the same decimal place. OK, now that we've set that up, uh, let's think about, well, I want to point out that I have the units listed for everything. If I want to know the units of something, it's indicated in the table. You see, I've said velocity right up here, and right next to that it says meters per second. I indicated the unit. Same with the setting on the launcher. I've indicated that it's centimeters. There's no guesswork at all on the part of the reader. The reader is told what all of the measurements units are. Okay, now that we have that, then let's start working on the aesthetics. So if you look at this column, this column right here that I've highlighted, it, it looks too wide. I don't like the way that it looks. So what I can do is this initial setting on the launcher, that's, that's the part that's too wide. What I can do is there's this button up here that I'm, my, my mouse is over right now. It says wrap text. Wrap text. If I click that and then I make the column smaller, the text will show up underneath it. Now I do have to adjust the size of that row so that I can see it, but it looks much nicer the way it is. Okay. Um, 
Also, these trials, they're justified to the left. That's not so nice. I'm going to center justify them. I think that makes a little bit nicer. There we go. They're centered horizontally and vertically. Makes a little bit, a little bit better. Also, this velocity, that title velocity refers to all of the trial. All of the trials, you're measuring velocities. So I want that to sort of hover over here above maybe between trials three and four. And what you can do with that is you can merge. You can highlight all these cells and merge them into one big cell. So if you look right here, I've clicked on merge and center. If I do that, now I've just got one big cell right there. Okay, um, let's see, what else can we do? Well, we want to we want to make borders here in our chart. And what you can do is you can highlight your whole table, and there's this funny little thing over here where, around where it says font. And if I click, if I click all borders, it'll put borders around every single cell. Looks much nicer. And I'll do that with these guys as well. Give them all borders. Okay, now it's still a little hard to read, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these cells where the, in, the launcher was set to 1.5 centimeters, and I'm going to give those a border around those, a thicker border just around that. So if you look, I'm going to go down and it says thick box border, and it's going to give an outside border just for that area. Okay, I'll do that for all of the levels of the cart launcher. Okay. And I'll go ahead and do that for the upper level and for this velocity part of the table. Okay. It's quite a bit easier to read. I'll also do it for these titles and there we go. All right. So there you go. There's a there's a table. Um, some of the important things that I want to repeat is the units are indicated for every measurement. So the settings on the launcher indicated that the units are centimeters. For the velocities, it indicates up here that the units are meters per second. Also, all of my measurements go down to the same decimal place. Okay? It's not inconsistent. It's not some in the ones place, some in the tenths. They're all down to the hundredths place. Also, I've labeled it very carefully. So for the 1.5 centimeter, I measured four things, and I did six different trials, so I have 24 measurements in all. But it's easy. If I go to my chart, I can pick out all of my data. If I want to know when the launcher was set to 3.5 centimeters, what the velocity of CART 2 was before the collision in the second trial, I can find that. It's right there. The answer is 0 0.32 meters per second. Okay, so it's an easy chart to navigate, easy table to navigate.